designing a post pattern hospital baby bassinet. So I'll begin by introducing my team. My name is Yvonne Wong. Yeshma Raza. Charming Mona. Minhai. Chija So the objective of, of, of our, our project was to design, fabricate, prototype, and test an easy access hospital based baby bassinet that can be used for mothers which has had C section. So a little bit of background on C-section. C-section uh, is a surgery, a surgical procedure in which a baby is being born by cracking the abdomen of the mother. And over, over the years, we, we, we see a lot of um, issues that come. It comes with pain, it comes with discomfort, and it comes with a probability of a tear being open due to um, excessive movements or so. So um, in the US, 32% of births have been done through C-sections. And based on CDC, over from 1999 to 2016, there's been a 20% increase in the number of C-sections, which accounts to 1.2 million of delivery cases being done by C-section. So the purpose of our, of our design is to come up with a method that will make it easy for a mom to interact with her baby after delivery. Most often after C-section, the mother is on a medication, and so we want to ease twisting and twerking and ease motion or interaction that will limit falls and that is gonna limit um, any room for reopening of the tears. As you can see in, in the photo on the right, you can see that the, 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 the present bassinets that have been used in the hospital require a lot of twisting and turning for the mother to assess the baby. So we're looking for methods on how to reduce that and minimize risk of the baby falling out of the, bas out of the bassinet during transfer. The photo on the, on the left is our product. Our product is flexible. Our product is able to come to the mother. The mother can sit on the bed comfortably and, and interact or, and assess the, the product easily. So intended use, our product is intended to be used in the hospital. It's to be used in the level one delivery unit. It's to be used in the neonatal unit as well as the postpartum patient. The photo shows the postpartum um, unit in the hospital. That's a recovery unit in the hospital where the mother recovers. During that process, she's still on the medication, so the bassinet comes to you. I'll pass it over to Razo, who's going to continue with the components of our design. Thank you, Yvonne. So initially, what we, what we wanted to do a certain thing. So the first thing is we wanted up and down motion in order to accommodate different hospital bed heights and also a 360 swivel motion so where the mother can access her baby while in the hospital bed. In order to do this, for our first design, we went with a linear actuator for the up and down motion and a lazy Susan for the 360 rotational motion. And we also went with a simple wooden base. <coughs> Here's a little bit about our design process. On the first sketch, you see our initial, one of our many initial sketches. And on the next slide, um, on the next sketch, you see um, one of our first 3D models. And then following from our first initial prototype, down to our final sketch of our final design. So, the ch so a couple of changes from our initial prototype to our final design was we decided to go with a sturdy column lifter in order to, because the first linear actuator was too flimsy and not rigid enough. And another thing, we decided to go with a sturdy swivel mechanism over the Lazy Susan because the Lazy Susan could only account for axial loads and no bending moments. And we also decided to go with a steel frame, other than the wood frame, for rigidity and stability. So now we'll get into the components. We'll talk about a little bit about the base, the column lifter, the swivel mechanism, and also the, the steel stainless steel basket on top. So for the base, on the for the base design, we decided to go with three rectangular steel tubes that were all welded together to, to accommodate the out, outer base. And for the inner part, we decided to go with a steel, steel, with a solid steel arm to for to accommodate for the center of mass to keep the center of mass low to the ground to prevent tipping. And for the handle, we made it in such a way that it was adjustable in height and also um, easily removable for storage and shipping. Now I'm going to pass it over to CJ to further talk about components and key specifications. <coughs> For the mobility of our equipment, we had to use some casters. Four casters were placed at the base of our equipment, two in the front and two at the back. All casters have a braking system, and the braking system serves as a lock mechanism when the equipment is in a static position. Also, we, used, we had to select a casters made of polystyrene material because of uh, noise reduction. 
Now, this accounts for the, the top, block, uh, top block part of the, accounts for the super part of the equipment. On the left part, you can see uh, the stainless steel bassinet. One on the right, on the right hand part, we have uh, our, mat our equipment made of 140 mater steel materials. The materials, are the uh, components of those materials there are the, the, the steel, the, the solid shaft, the cylindrical tube, the rectangular tube, and also the, uh, the, the washers, the lock nuts, the threaded, the threaded rods, and the uh, embedded bushings. Now, the embedded bushings are self-lubricating. Self Reason? Because it's going to last a long time for the a lifetime of the equipment. These are the uh, pictures of our parts. The, on, to your left hand side, you, got the, uh, you have the the cylindrical rod shaft, you have the uh, cylindrical pipe, and also the bushings and the, and the, and the steel plates. That's our column lifter. The column lifter can carry about 400 pounds. It's also made of steel. It has about 110 input, uh, input voltage, and uh, it, it goes at various like, adjustable heights for the height, uh, considering the height of the mother and the height of the bed. Also, not forgetting about the remote control, which is going to help the monitor to access Going the movement of the, of, the, of, the, of the column lifter. And that's the final product of our, of our isn't it? Now, we're talking about our, our key features. We're able to achieve a 300, 360 degree swivel motion and a linear movement as well. Looking at this, we'll observe the, 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 linear, the linear movement and the velocity of which this goes is 0 0.5 inches per second. And the clearance it goes from the top of the bed is about 26 inches. And we'll have about five inches clearance at the base of the bed for, com for compatibility. And, we're and also, uh, we have the lock mechanisms for the wheel. And while we're talking about our designs, we're looking at something we could easily ship, assemble, and assemble quickly for storage. And this has actually passed the test of easy assemble, easy shipping, and also easy storage. I'll pass it over to Vinny for the testing. <coughs> Next, I'll talk about the testing. For our testing purposes, we use the following two testing methods, which are the functionality testing and the simulation, FEA simulations. For the functionality testing was conducted with the cooperation of the Women's Hospital of Texas, and we use a hospital bed for the compatibility testing, and also we have a woman on a hospital bed for the ease of usage testing. Also, we test for the tipping capability of this product by applying load directly to the system, and also you can see right here, as well as on the video, we apply a lot of force onto the bassinet, and it doesn't show any sign of tipping. Also, we incorporate the feedbacks from medical professionals as well. The FEA result was conducted with the assistance of Autodesk Inventor and we use the following assumptions that the forecaster acted as a four fixed constraint and we also use a 100 pounds law representing the accidentally forced that in case a, children, a child is hanging on this bassinet and also someone is leaning on it like this one. The von my stress is about 11 KSI which is below the U strain of stainless steel, and also for the deflection, this is relatively really small, about 0.07 inches for a 115 pounds load. This animation shows the deflection behavior when the load is applied, and you can see the the 0.07 inches <coughs> deflection is at this point. For the safety factor, the safety factor was above the one that we designed, which is above the safety factor of three. And for both cases, when the best the bassinet is facing inward, inward like this, is regularly operated, and this is the most hazardous upper positions. Both cases, the safety factor are above 3.59 and 3.03 respectively. And again, this is above the one we decide, which is above 23. And next, I will hand over the presentation to Shami. Thank you, Win. Here, I would like to compare why our bassinet is better than the one that is currently being used. The, right pic the picture on the right shows the current model that is being used. I I'm sure a lot of you have seen it already. So the bassinet that is currently being used is not mobile. 
what happens is in order to access the baby, the mother would have to get out of the bed every time she, she wants to get the baby. So that makes it hazardous because as Yvonne said, she is under medications, so, so she may not be in her 100% conscious mind. There have been instances where the mother would try to elevate her bed to a very risky level and then try to bend over to pick up the baby. This puts both the mother as well as the baby at risk because if the mother falls, she has a chance of getting hurt and worst case is if the mother falls on the baby, it's actually very bad for the baby. But our EasyNet, we can uh, literally from the bed itself, we can bring the bassinet and the baby right on top of the bed where the mother will be able to easily pick up the baby. Here we are comparing why uh, uh, the bassinet is better and it has been given as a feedback from the hospitals and the hospital professionals, what they think is their bassinet is still a little bit risky.
so that she can uh, control the motion in case if she is just pressing on the button right now. That's where, that was our initial thought. She is pressing on the button and it just keeps coming and she forgets to turn it off. That would hit harder, whereas she can control the motion of this by her hand while pulling it closer. Yes. I have four questions for you. So I'll take two, then I'll give the floor back and I'll take <laughs> Did you do anything related to all this or in relation to FDA regulations, approval process, or anything like that? Did you investigate it? Yes, we did investigate the FDA regulations. And how does, um, that, uh, does that go into your design and your for the hospital FDA regulations, they, they would not have any kind of fabric or any kind of uh, uh, fabric kind of stuff for making their product because they want to sanitize it. And also the length and the width of things, it has to be sturdy. So most of the safety factors that they usually go with is three, uh, over three. So that's what they look at. And since they have a basket that uh, we, we actually designed this basket because we want to be uh, we want the hospital people to be able to use the current basket they have to pop it in so that it can uh, use it, so they can use that same basket for their ICU units or any other units. So you look at the FDA regulations and you know that there are certain materials that have to be approved, certain designs that have to be approved, finish points that have to be, to be taken care yes. of, safety factors and materials. How does that play in the price of your manufacturing? In the manufacturing process, the safety factor, uh, the one one uh, key thing that would go is taking care of the paint because we would have to go for a lead-free paint because it's dealing with the child. So uh, that would go for the price. We have not looked at that, but uh, we will pr probably look at the price for how lead-free paint works. That's the only one aspect that we have not looked at, but we know that it has to pass the lead-free paint aspect of it. But we, we did consider all the safety. Okay, so this, the, the flip to that is, is there anybody in the market that has a competitive product to this at all? Currently, so there is no. Product. Okay, so um, adding to this, currently there is no product like this in the hospital. When we actually initially to start up our design, we went to the hospital to get a feedback to see is this a need? And that was a major need in the hospital. That was a feedback we got from um, Megan, who was the manager in the hospital. There is no. There is no device like this, and that's what, so sh they were all curious to see what we're gonna come up with and how um, how much improvement there will be. So there was no other in the hospital? But there is I'm no other in the hospital. In the market. So in the market, there are home-based ones. There are home-based designs that do not um, do a lot of these motions. The ones in the house are swivels. So they can swivel at home, but there is no really a, a device like this that go up and down and rotate. That's what makes up for the- So I'm not gonna ask this question further, but something to compare to because Search this, and like I said, we, our comparison was a home base design. We looked at um, the requirements and the specifications on the home base one in terms of the swivel, how much speed does it have, in terms of the stability, how much stability does the, the home base one have. So, our inspiration was from there, but in terms of hospital use, there is really no use. Well, fair enough. I mean, I, I think you guys made a very good case of what you saw. My point is when you look at this, you have to look at the worldwide market. Um, one question that I had was on your price. You know, when you said that you came close to the cost in that thousand dollars for some of the price, are you talking about that's the price that the hospital paid for that system? But that's your actual cost, so you would have to add a markup which would make it a lot more expensive than a thousand dollars. Yeah, that's our cost of production. Right. But yes, we didn't consider the profit that we would be making because uh, that would be when we market the product, depending on how much profit margin we want to put, we want to add to it. But you're still going to be about one and a half times the price. So that's yes. what you're still concerned. But the, and the current design in the hospital doesn't have all these mechanisms. So it's, it, it, it actually provides much more than what the hospital has at the moment. Okay. Um, and yeah, I mean, those, and the other one is the locking mechanism. Like why do you need to just work at the time this mechanical latches or something that it doesn't? Because if you have one that is uneven, you know, it will just swivel. So you can just put two latches that are really expensive. Exactly. 
that's the way, I mean, we have enough, the way that it was designed was, this was a, it was designed in such a way that as soon as you stop applying force, it, it stopped it on its own. But well, there's friction on the, uh, yeah, there's a, yeah. there is an embedded uh, push in itself. Yeah. Well, for future improvements, we'll definitely want a push locking mechanism. I mean, if, if needed, you can make it very quick or very inexpensive, but... Yeah. Any other questions? Yeah, sure. Wonderful project. Very, you did a wonderful job of marketing and the congratulations. This is going to be benefit for all of us. All of us, a lot of us. So, sits and it's made out of stainless steel it's very light if you try to apply any type of force like this it'll easily tip over and currently uh, as you once say there is something in the market for homes but they don't have this thing going right into the bed the whole basket going into the bed the swivel they have is in the middle so it doesn't allow the basket to go exactly the, the whole basket to go into the bed so that's that's the that's what they have in the market well, right because looking at the bed, most times the bed is adjustable and it comes up like that. So when you try to bring the bed up, it could tip the bed, the bed all over. For that reason, we actually, that was, that was part of our initial design before we changed the solution. And also one thing is that we, the, the point that we want this thing to mo 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 mobile, and we focus on the mobility. So if we attach it to the bed, we are just put that one for only that bed and we need to, sometimes we need to take this one into another room, different room in the hospital. So that's another consideration. So not attaching this system to the bed. The average weight for the baby 
newborn baby in America, is, the average is about 7.5 pounds. And we use 15 pounds, which is over the... Is that an American baby? All I hear about in the last 10 years of anybody that I knew was about 10 pounds. No. Uh, no. So no. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Garcia, I think we're ready. <laughs> I think that they have come a long way. I think that it was a little bit of a, you know, a push to get to another level, but I think it's satisfactory right now. Uh, 
after they, they went into the hospital a few weeks ago, it's, it's a completely different meaning. Uh, and one final comment, no babies were harmed in the process <laughs> of testing, nothing. Thank you, people.